Constructivism. To a constructivist, children learn by constructing knowledge from their experiences. Each child constructs her own mental model of how she thinks the world works. To a constructivist, children are explorers, and so by nature are learners. They are not blank slates. They have prior knowledge that they use actively. Knowledge is represented in the brain by mental frameworks called schema or constructs, which a child draws on to make guesses when encountering new experiences. There are many important constructivists. For the sake of brevity, I will focus on three: Piaget, Kelly, and Vygotsky. Piaget was a Swiss psychologist whose ideas have had a big influence on children's education. I will look at two of his ideas here: assimilation and accommodation, and stages of learning. First, assimilation and accommodation. According to Piaget, children use the process of assimilation and accommodation to create a schema or mental framework to interpret what they are experiencing. When a child encounters something new, she experiences confusion, which she deals with either by trying to make the new experience fit her existing schema. This is called assimilation, or by changing her schema to adapt to the new idea. This is called accommodation. For example, when a child encounters a zebra for the first time, she may think it's a horse. This is assimilation. At some point, she will realize it is different from a horse and change her mental framework to accommodate the new knowledge. This is accommodation. Accommodation is where the deepest learning occurs. But it is more difficult to do than assimilation, because it involves a more fundamental change. And when we feel our existing schema are threatened, it is especially difficult to change, even when there is clear evidence that we are wrong. The consequences of this idea in the classroom are huge. It implies that teachers need to constantly challenge the children. To change their schema, and help the children leave their comfort zones, and we need to do this in a safe, positive, and fun way, so that the children feel less threatened, and are more willing to take risks. Trust is very important. If the children have a trusting relationship with the teacher, they are more likely to risk going out of their comfort zones. And they are more likely to risk changing their schema. We can also gradually build up the children's willingness to take risks by trying to make sure that their risk taking leads to a successful outcome. For example, if we deliberately confuse the children by presenting a new language target in a puzzle, we may need to hint and prompt. To make sure they solve the puzzle and understand the language target, if they succeed, they are more likely to trust us the next time we want them to take a risk, and over time, they are more likely to have an active approach to learning. Stages of learning. Piaget proposed that children progress through four developmental stages. The sensory motor stage, from birth to the acquisition of language. The pre-operational stage, from about two to about seven. The concrete operational stage, from about seven to about eleven. And finally, 
The Formal Operational Stage I am not going to go into the details of the stages here, but I will give links to where you can find more information. What is important here is to look at the consequences of Piaget's ideas for teaching children. Arguably, there have been both positive and negative consequences. On the positive side, it has helped teachers select teaching methods and plan courses that are more in tune with what children are able to handle. On the negative side, Piaget's stages have sometimes been taken too literally and it has sometimes been assumed that they determine exactly what a child can or cannot do at a particular age. This is not what Piaget intended and this kind of categorization may restrict children from reaching their full potential. Piaget's research methods and results have also often been questioned. These days, it is more common to see the development of a child as more of a gradual process than in clear-cut stages. Piaget has also been criticised for not looking closely enough at the effect of culture and social interaction on how fast a child develops. Though in fairness, this wasn't his focus. Another main criticism has been that Piaget's stages don't take enough consideration of context. Although Piaget recognised that there is a lot of variation in how fast children develop, there is research that indicates that children can go through the stages quite a lot faster in familiar or rich contexts. For example, Piaget suggested that young children cannot think abstractly, and yet later research seems to show that within a familiar context, like a shopping trip, they may be able to. Also, child chess geniuses or child mathematics geniuses seem to be able to think abstractly within a particular context earlier than Piaget's theory seems to predict. If we want children to be as good as possible at English, I think we need to be careful not to be restricted by broad ideas about what children can or cannot do at a particular age or stage of development. And I think we need to focus on how we can help children reach their full potential within the context of learning English. Which leads on to Kelly and Vygotsky. And I will talk about their ideas in the next video.